Hi students, welcome to VTech. VTech is India's number one platform for BTech students. We provide university specific video lessons for all BTech branches. We also provide separate modules for campus recruitment such as PCS, Capgemini, Wipro, Infosys, etc. Please install our app and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to solve numerical ability of PCS and QT. In the actual exam, the number of questions will be 26 and the time allotted is 40 minutes. The level of difficulty is on par with actual TCS exam. Please pay attention, this will be very useful for your exam. In this video, we will be discussing a similar model paper of TCS and QT. See the first question. In a simultaneous throw of two dice, what is the probability of getting a total of 7? So total they are using two dice. So the number appeared on the die, if we add those two numbers, it should be a sum of 7. So suppose if a die 1 has faced the 6 side, another one should be facing 1. So that 6 plus 1 is equal to 7. Next if it is 5, this should be 2. So it is also equal to 7. If it is 4, it should be 3. It is also equals to 7. So in the similar way, if it is 3, it should be 4. If it is 2, it should be 5. If it is 1, it should be 6. So, the total number of favorable cases for the sum to be 7 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, total 6 favorable cases are there. When 2 dice are thrown, the total number of outputs will be 6 power n. So, here 2 dice are thrown. So, it is 6 power 2. That is nothing but equals to 36. So, probability is equals to number of favorable events by total number of events that is nothing but equals to 6 by 36 that is equals to 1 by 6 so option a is our correct answer see the next question out of five men and three women a committee of three members is to be formed so that it has one woman and two men in how many different ways it can be done so total number of men are five and women they are three members so, from these members, a committee of one woman and two men should be formed. So, out of the five men, we have to select only just two men. So, it can be done in 5C2 ways. And here we are using and so into one woman. So, out of three women, we have to select one woman. So, 3C1. That is equal to 5C2 means 5 factorial by 2 factorial into 5 minus 2 factorial. Similarly, 3 factorial is equal to 3 factorial by 1 factorial into 3 minus 1 factorial. So, 5 into 4 into 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial value is 2. 5 minus 2, 3 factorial, 1 times 2 times into 3 factorial can be written as 3 into 2 factorial by 1 into 2 factorial. So, 5 2s are 10, 10 uh, 3s are 30. So, in 30 different ways, we can select one woman and two men out of five men and three women. So, option D is our correct answer. See the next question. In an examination, there are three multiple choice questions and each question has four choices. The number of ways in which a student can fail to get all answers correct is. So, let us understand the question. So, three multiple choice questions are there. And each question has four options A, B, C, D. Let the options be A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. So, out of these four choices, any one will be our correct answer. So, in the question they asked the number of ways in which the student can fail to get all answers correct is. That means in how many ways he will write the wrong answer. So, first, Number of ways of attempting the first question may be four ways because he may answer A or B or C or D. He can attempt any of the options. So, first question he can attempt in four ways. Similarly, second question he can attempt in four ways. Similarly, third question also he can attempt in four ways. So, total he will attempt in four power three ways. But the correct answer from this will be only one. So, here also the correct answer will be one. Here also the correct answer will be only one. Possible way of answering all the three question and answers correctly is only one. So, for each question it is one case. For all the three questions, the probability of attempting all the correct answer is only one way. So, correctly we can attempt in only one way. So, 
so the probability of getting all the wrong answers is total attempts of questions minus the probability of attempting the correct one that is 64 minus 1 that is equals to 63 so in 63 number of ways he can fail to get all answers correct that means in 63 ways he can write the attempt the answer in a wrong way so this is our final answer option d is our final answer see the next question find the least six digit number which is exactly divisible by 349 a least six digit number is 1 00 Triple zero. So one lakh is our least six digit number. But we have to find the least six digit number which is exactly divisible by three forty nine. So first, let us uh, divide this number with three forty nine. Two times six ninety eight two zero and three three zero two. Next eight times two seven nine two. Subtract it. Two twenty-eight. Next, uh, bring this zero down six times. Two zero nine four, and subtract one eighty-six. So the remainder is one eighty-six. So the least six-digit number when it is added with three forty-nine and subtract the remainder from it, so that it will be exactly divisible. So it will become. One zero zero one six three. So one zero zero one six three is our least six digit number, which is exactly divisible by three forty nine. See the next question. If you subtract minus one from plus one, what will be the result? So subtract minus one from plus one. So one minus or subtract minus one from it minus one. That is nothing but equal to minus into minus. Plus one, so it is equal to two. So option B is our correct answer. See the next question. In limestone, forty percent is calcium and the rest is carbon and oxygen. If in twenty grams of limestone there is nine point four percent of oxygen, what is the percentage of carbon? So this limestone consists of calcium, oxygen, and also carbon. So already they have gave calcium is of forty percent. We need to find oxygen from the given data percentage of oxygen and the required percentage we need to find at the end is carbon. So first we will find the percentage of oxygen from the given data. So here they have given total nine point four kgs of oxygen in present in twenty kilograms of limestone. So nine point four by twenty into hundred. So nine point four into five is nothing but forty seven percentage. So the oxygen is comprising of forty seven percentage. So simply we can say that out of so in total hundred percent of the limestone is equals to forty percent of calcium, forty seven percent of oxygen, and x percentage of carbon. So carbon percentage is equals to hundred minus forty minus forty seven. That is hundred minus eighty seven percent. Which is equals to thirteen percentage. So the percentage of carbon available in the limestone is thirteen percentage. So option B is our correct answer. See the next question. The population of a variety of tiny brush in an experimental field increased by ten percent in the first year, increased by eight percent in the second year, but decreased by ten percent in the third. If the present number of brushes in the experiment is twenty six thousand seven hundred and thirty. Then the number of brushes in the beginning was so first at the final year that is at the end of the third year the number of brushes are twenty six thousand seven hundred and thirty. So for the first year it has increased by ten percent. So rate of increase is one plus r by hundred. So one plus ten by hundred into in the second year it has increased by eight percent. That is one plus eight by hundred in the third year. It has decreased by ten percent. So one minus ten by hundred. This gives our total number of brushes at the starting of the experiment. At, that is at the beginning of the experiment. So that is equals to two six seven three zero divided by zero zero gets cancelled. So we will get eleven by ten. Here one or eight by hundred. 
here also 0 0 get cancelled we will get 9 by 10 so that is equals to 26730 into 10 by 11 into 100 by 108 into 10 by 9 so that is equals to 25000 brushes so at the starting of the experiment the total number of brushes here are 25000 so option a is our correct answer see the next problem when 15 is included in a list of natural numbers then the mean is increased by 2 when 1 is included in this new list the mean of the numbers in the new list is decreased by 1 how many numbers were there in the original list so let the total number of numbers be n the average of the numbers be x so the sum of the numbers will be nx when 15 is included then the average is increased by 2 so what is average sum of numbers by total number of numbers so for nx 15 is included that means total becomes 15 is included means one number is increased so it will become n plus 1 then the average is increased by 2 initially the average is x now it is increased by 2 so it becomes x plus 2 next condition is when 1 is included to this new list the mean in the new list is decreased by 1 so to this new list 1 is included so the sum is included by 1 so 15 plus 1 as 1 is increased the total number of numbers are also increased by 1 so n plus 1 plus 1 is equal to the average is decreased by 1 so it becomes n plus 16 by n plus 2 is equal to x minus 1 that implies nx plus 16 is equal to so if we bring it to the other side it becomes nx plus 16 is equal to n plus 2 into x minus 1 so n into x nx x into 2 2x minus n minus 2 that is nx nx gets cancelled take this 2 to the other side it will become 18 is equal to 2x minus 9 now let us simplify this one we will get nx plus 15 is equals to n plus 1 into x plus 2 so it becomes nx plus 15 is equals to nx plus x plus 2n plus 2 here also nx nx gets cancelled take this 2 to the other side it will become 13 is equal to x plus 2n now in the question they asked us to find out how many numbers are there total number of numbers are n so let us solve these two equations for n value so i am multiplying this whole equation with 2 it becomes 26 is equals to 2x plus 2n now write the second equation as it is 18 is equal to 2x minus n so if i subtract this both equations i will get 2x 2x gets cancelled 2n minus n is equal to n 26 minus 18 8 so n is equals to 8 so total 8 terms are there in the given series so option d n is equal to 8 is our correct answer see the next question ashok buys a car at 20 percent discount of the price and sells it at 20 percent higher price his percentage gain is so here let the price of the initially the price of the car be 100 rupees let it be now he got it at 20 percent discount that means he bought it at 80 rupees 20 percent discount means in 120 rupees so 100 minus 20 he got it for 80 rupees he sold the car at 20 percent higher price so he sold it at 20 percent higher so 100 plus 20 is equal to 120 rupees so he sold it for 120 rupees now they are asking the percentage of gain gain is nothing but sp minus cp that is equals to 120 minus 80 equals to 40 so gain percentage is equals to 40 by cost price is 80 rupees into 100 one time two times 50 times this is one time so 50 percentage is our gain percentage so option c is our correct answer see the next question Two pipes A and B can be filled can fill a tank in six hours and four hours respectively. 
if they are opened on alternative hours and if pipe A is opened first, in how many hours the tank shall be full? So totally there are two pipes A and B. So A can fill in 6 hours. So for 1 hour it can fill 1 by 6 of the tank. B can fill the tank in 4 hours. So for 1 hour it can fill 1 by 4 of the tank. If both pipes are open alternatively, that means if pipe A is open, pipe B will be closed. If pipe B is open, pipe A will be closed. That means total work done means this is for the first hour and the next hour B will be doing its work. So total work done will be done in 2 hours. So if both pipes A and pipe B are open means it is nothing but the work done in 2 hours. That is nothing but equal to 1 by 6 plus 1 by 4. So 24 is our LCM 4 plus 6 that is 10 by 24. So it is equals to 5 by 12. So for 2 hours it is filling 5 by 12 of the tank. So in the next uh, 2 hours that means simply multiply with 2. So it will uh, take a 10 by 12 of the part of the tank to fill. That is 5 times 6 times. So 5 by 6 of the tank will be filled. So the remaining part means in total one part 5 by 6 is filled so the remaining part will be 6 minus 5 by 6 that is 1 by 6 of the part of the tank will be remaining so in the next hour a pipe will be open because 1 2 3 4 let it be these are the hours first hour a will be open second hour b third hour a fourth hour b and in the fifth hour a will be opened again so 1 by 6 is nothing but the filling capacity of a so in the fifth hour A will be open and the tank will be full. So in the fifth hour the tank will be filled completely. So option C 5 is our correct chance. See the next question. If A minus 1 by A is equal to 2 then find the value of A cube minus 1 by A cube is. So here they have given that A minus 1 by A is equal to 2. So we have a formula A minus B whole cube is equal to A cube minus b cube minus 3ab into a minus b. So by using this formula we will do a minus 1 by a is equal to 2. Now cube on both sides. So this will become in the form of a minus b whole cube where here a is nothing but a while b is equal to 1 by a. Now apply the formula. So that becomes a cube minus 1 by a whole cube minus 3a into 1 by a into a minus 1 by a is equal to 2 whole cube it is nothing but equal to 8. So it becomes a cube minus 1 by a cube a a gets cancelled. So 3 into a minus 1 by a is equal to 8. But from the question we know that so a minus 1 by a is equal to 2. So a cube minus 1 by a cube minus 3 into 2 is equal to 8. So now this becomes a minus 1 by a cube minus 6 is equal to 8. Now take this minus 6 to the right hand side it will become plus 6. So a cube minus 1 by a cube is equal to 8 plus 6 that is nothing but equals to 14. So they have asked us to find out a cube minus 1 by a cube value that is nothing but equals to 14. So option C is our correct answer. See the next question. The bus fare and train fare of a place from Kolkata were 20 rupees and 30 rupees respectively. Train fare has been increased by 20% and the bus fare has been increased by 10%. Ratio of new train fare to the bus fare is. So initially the bus fare is 20 rupees. Initially the train fare is 30 rupees. So what happened? The bus fare has been increased by 10%. So that is nothing but 110%. That is 110 by 100 of 20 rupees. And the train fare has been increased by 20%. So 120 by 100 of 30 rupees. Now they asked us to find out the ratio of new train fare to the new bus fare. That is nothing but this is our new train fare. So... 120 by 100 of 30 rupees divided by 110 by 100 of 20 rupees. So this will become 120 by 100 into 30 into 
100 divided by 110 into 20 rupees. So 100, 100 gets cancelled. Two zeros get cancelled. So here one time. This is six times. So six threes are 18 by 11. So the ratio is 18 is to 11. So option D is our correct answer. 18 is to 11. See the next question. The falling height of an object is proportional to the square of time. One object falls 64 centimeters in 2 seconds. Then in 6 seconds, from how much height the object will fall? So in the question they have given that the falling height of an object is proportional to the square of time. So falling height is proportional to the square of time. So if we remove this proportionality symbol we will get h is equals to k into t square. So from the question we have the height is equal to 64 centimeter and the time given as 2 seconds. So first substitute it to find the constant k. So height is equal to 64 k into the time is 2 seconds whole square. So that is nothing but 64 is equals to 4 k. 1 times 16 times. So the value of k obtained as 16. Now we should find the value of the height of the object when the time is equal to 6 seconds. So same formula h is equal to instead of k write down 16 t square. We should find the height. So 16 into the value of t is nothing but 6 seconds. So 6 whole square. So that becomes 16 into 36. That is equals to 576 centimeters. So when it is at a 6 seconds time the height will be at 576 centimeters. So option D is our correct answer. See the next question. The greatest of root 2, 6th root of 3, cubed root of 4, 4th root of 5 is. Suppose if they have given any numbers like 8, 9, minus 10 or some 100, we can tell the greatest and least of the numbers. But here they have given in the form of the root. So, nth root a can be written as a power 1 by n. So, in that way I am rewriting these numbers as square root of 2 is 2 power 1 by 2. Square root, 6th root of 3 is 3 power 1 by 6. Cubed root of 4 can be written as 4 power 1 by 3. Fourth root of 5 can be written as 5 power 1 by 4. Now, here see the denominator part is different. In order to compare this whether it is the greatest or smallest, we will make the denominator part as equal. So, take LCM of 2, 6, 3, 4. 2 table 1 time, 3 time, 4. And in 3 table 1 time, 1 time, this is 2 time. So, 2. So, 6, uh, 3 twos are 6, 6 twos are 12. So, the denominator should be 12. So, it, if we make the denominator as 12, we can easily compare them. So, this I am rewriting as 1 by 2 into 6 by 6. So, it becomes 6 by 12. Now, this one 3 into 1 by 6 into 2 by 2. So, the denominator becomes 12. So, it is 3 power 2 by 12. Next, 4 power 1 by 3 can be written as into 4 by 4. So, that becomes 4 power 4 by 12. Next, 5 power 1 by 4 can be written as 5 power 1 by 4 into 3 by 3. That is 5 power 3 by 12. Now, we can observe that all the denominators are equal. So, now we will rewrite it again as 2 power 6 power 1 by 2, 3 square power 1 by 12, 4 power 4 whole power 1 by 12, 5 power 3 whole power 1 by 12. So, 2 power 6 is nothing but 64 whole power 1 by 2. 3 square is nothing but 9 whole power 1 by 12. So here 64 power 1 by 12, 9 power 1 by 12. 4 power 4 can be rewritten as 256 whole power 1 by 12. 5 cube can be written as 125 whole power 1 by 12. Now just to compare the bases. Here 64, 9, 256, 125. So out of all this 256 is the greater value. 
So 256 whole power 1 by 12 will be the greatest value. That in turns 4 power 1 by 3 is the greatest value. That in turns means cube root of 4 is our greater value. So out of all this cube root 4 is our greatest number. So option B is our correct answer. See the next problem. The value of 1 by root of 12 minus root of 140 minus 1 by root of 8 minus root of 60 minus 2 by root of 10 plus root of 84. So first rewrite it as 12 minus 140 can be written as 140 divided by 4. So what is the value of it? 35. So I am writing it as root of 4 into 35. Next, root of 8 minus this uh, 60 can be written as 15 into 4 minus 2 by root of 10 into 84 can be written as 4 into 21. Okay, now I am bringing this 4 to the outside of the square root. So it becomes 1 by root of 12 minus 2 root 35 minus 1 by root of 8 minus 2 root 15 minus 2 by root of 10 plus 2 root 21. Now I am rewriting this uh, 35 as 5 into 7. Here 15 as 3 into 5. 21 as 7 into 3. In the similar way I am rewriting this 12 as 7 plus 5. So this becomes root of 12 I am splitting as 7 plus 5 minus 2 root of 7 into 5. Okay. Next minus 1 by root of I am splitting this 13 as 3 into 5. No? So I am writing this 8 as 3 plus 5 minus 2 into 3 into 5. Next I am writing this 21 as 7 into 3. So I am splitting this 10 as 7 plus 3. So it becomes minus 2 by root of 7 plus 3 plus 2 root of 7 into 3. So how can again I rewrite this equation? I can write it as root 7 whole square plus root 5 whole square. Similarly here root 3 whole square root 5 whole square. Here also root 7 whole square root 3 whole square because if it is root a whole square square and root get cancelled and we will get only the a. So that same method I applied here. So here it is of the form of a square plus b square minus 2ab because we can write it as root 7 into root 5. So this becomes 1 by this is nothing but equals to a minus b whole square. So root 7 minus root 5 whole square. Next this is also of the form a square plus b square minus 2ab. So we will take 5 as a and 3 as b. So it becomes root 5 minus root 3 whole square minus 2 divided by similarly this is of the form a square plus b square plus 2ab. So root 7 plus root 3 whole square. Here squares and roots get cancelled. So we now rationalize them. So how to rationalize? If you are having here minus, write the same numericals with plus sign. So root 7 minus root 5 into root 7 plus root 5 minus root 5 plus root 3 divided by root 5 minus root 3 into root 5 plus root 3. Similarly minus 2 into root 7 plus root 3 is there. So rationalize it by using root 7 minus root 3 divided by root 7 minus root 3. So this is of the form of a minus b into a plus b. So it is nothing but equal to a square minus b square. Here this the denominator will transform into root 7 whole square minus root 5 whole square. Square will get cancelled so we will get 7 minus 5. So rewrite it as root 7 plus root 5 by 7 minus 5. Next one is minus root 5 plus root 3 by 5 minus 3 minus 2 divided by 
7 minus 3 here in the denominator root 7 minus root 3. Now let us solve it. So the denominator here 7 minus 5 means it will become to 5 minus 3 will become to 7 minus 3 it is nothing but 4. So the LCM can be taken as 4. So as here LCM is 4 here denominator is 2. So multiply this whole with 2. So it becomes 2 root 7 plus 2 root 5 minus here also same 4 2. So multiply it with 2 minus 2 root 5 minus into plus minus 2 root 3. Here the denominators are same. So rewrite write the equation as it is minus into minus plus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 3 plus 2 root 5 minus 2 root 5 minus 2 root 7 plus 2 root 7 gets cancelled and the answer is 0. Okay. So the final option is option A is correct. The answer is 0. So see the next question. A sum of money becomes 7 by 6 of itself in 3 years at certain rate of simple interest. The rate per annum is so a sum becomes 7 by 6 of itself. So first let us uh, assume the sum is equal to x. So after 3 years the sum becomes 7 by 6 of itself. So it becomes 7 by 6. So the interest for the 3 years is 7 by 6 x minus x. That is nothing but equal to 7 x minus 6 x by 6. So it is x by 6. So the interest is x by 6. Now the rate per annum is so we have the formula as si simple interest is equals to p and r by 100 so we can write it as the simple interest is x by 6 we need to find the rate per annum so r is unknown the principal amount is nothing but x the n is equals to 3 years divided by 100 so xx gets cancelled we will get R is equals to 100 by 18. So this is 50 times. This is 9 times. That is 50 by 9. So convert it into mixed fraction. Just do the division. So it becomes 5 times 45 5. So it is nothing but 5 5 by 9. So it is 5 5 by 9 percent. So the rate of interest is 5, 5 by 9 percent. So option A is our correct answer. See the next question. A man invests rupees 4000 for 3 years at compound interest. After 1 year the money amounts to 4320. What will be the amount to the nearest rupee due at the end of 3 years? So first he invests the amount of rupees 4000. So the, our principal amount is 4000 rupees and the number of years is equal to 3. Now it becomes to 4320. So the compound interest sums to up to. So it becomes a sum of 4320. So the formula of compound interest is S is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 whole power N. That is nothing but the sum is equal to 4320 is equal to 4000 into 1 plus r by 100 where n is the number of years. Here it is equals to 4320 for 1 year. So n is equals to 1. So that implies 1 plus r by 100 is equal to 4320 by 4000. That is equals to here in um, 40 table this is 100 times this is 108 times. So R by 100 is equal to 108 by 100 minus 1. That implies so R by 100 is equal to 8 by 100. R is equal to 8 by 100 into 100. That is equal to 8%. So the rate of interest is 8%. They asked us to find the amount due at the end of 3 years. So at the end of 3 years it will become P into 1 plus r by 100 whole power 3. So the principal amount here is nothing but 4000 into 1 plus 8 by 100 whole cube. So that is equals to 4000 into in 2 table it is 4 times. Uh, otherwise taken 4 table 2 times and this is 25 times. So 25 plus 2 we will get 27 by 25 whole cube. 
So that is nothing but equal to 4000 into 27 by 25 into 27 by 25 into 27 by 25. So this is equals to 5038.85 rupees. So we can round up the number and we can write 5039 rupees. So here option B is our correct answer. See the next question. The ratio of area of a square to that of a square drawn on its diagonal is. So we have to find the ratio of area of the square to the square of its diagonal. So diagonal whole square. First of all, if we take the side of the square as A, then the area will be A square and the diagonal will be root 2A. So here we have to do whole square, so do the whole square. So it becomes A square by root 2 whole square into A square. A gets cancelled. 1 by root 2 whole square square and root gets cancelled, so it becomes 1 by 2. So the ratio is nothing but 1 is to 2. So option C is our correct answer. See the next question. The ratio of areas of square of size 6 cm and the equilateral triangle of size 6 cm is. Here also we have to find the ratio of area of square to that of the equilateral triangle where all sides are equal. So first of all the area of the square is A square. So here the side is given as 6. So we will write it as 6 square divided by area of the equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 a. So that is nothing but root 3 by 4 a square. So it here we will write it as root 3 by 4 a is nothing but 6 centimeter. So 6 whole square. So this 6 square 6 square gets cancelled. So we will get 4 by root 3. So the ratio will be 4 is to root 3. So option D is our correct answer. See the next question. A man, a woman and a boy can do a piece of work in 6, 9 and 18 days respectively. How many boys must assist one man and one woman to do the work in one day? So now we will find out the work done by each man, woman and boy per day. So total a man can do the work in 6 days. So the capacity of the man for single day is he can do 1 by 6 of the work. Similarly the woman can do the total work in 9 days. So she can do 1 by 9th of the work in a single day. And similarly the boy can do in 18 days. So the boy can do 1 by 18th part of the work in 1 day. So what did they ask if the boy assists one man and one woman to do the work in one day. How many boys? must assist one man and one woman to do the work in one day. So first we will find out the total working capacity of the man and woman per single day. That is simply add 1 by 6 by 1 by 9. So the LCM here we can take it as 2 times 3 times. So simply 3's are 9, 9 2's are 18. So 18, 18 divided by 6 it is 3. So 3 plus 18 divided by 9, 2. So it is 5 by 18. So 5 by 18 part of the work the man and woman can do in a single day. Now the remaining part of the work left in the single day is 1 minus 5 by 18. Because we are treating 1 as the whole work should be done. So out of it we have subtracted the capacities of work done by man and woman. So we will get 18 minus 5 by 18 that is nothing but equals to 13 by 18. So this is the part of the work which is remaining. So this work should be covered by the boy in order to assist the man and woman. So 13 by 18 part of the work should be done by the boy. So boy can do 13 by 18 part of the work divided by 1 by 18. 18, 18 gets cancelled. So total 13 boys are required in order to assist one man and one woman to complete the work in one day. So option D, 13 is our correct answer. See the next question. A car covers the first 39 kilometers of its journey in 45 minutes and the remaining 25 kilometers in 36 minutes. What is the average speed of the car? Average speed of the car is nothing but the total distance covered by 
total distance by total time. So here the total distance is nothing but 39 kilometers plus 25 kilometers. So 39 plus 25 divided by the total time. It is nothing but 45 plus 35. We can write per minute also but generally we will calculate kilometers per hour or meters per second. So it is in the form of minute but here the distance is given in kilometers. So we will convert this minute into hour so that the required uh, notation will be kilometers per hour. So it is nothing but 80 minutes. So convert it into hours means divided by 60. So 80 by 60 it is nothing but 4 by 3. So write down here 4 divided by 3. So this is equals to 4 and 664 into 4 into 3. This is 1 times 16 times. So the answer will be 48 kilometers per hour. So the average speed of the car is 48 kilometers per hour. So here option B is our correct answer. See the next question. What number must be subtracted from numerator and denominator 27 is to 35 so that it becomes equal to 2 is to 3. So 27 by 35. So this is the numerator is 27 and the denominator is 35. So this is the fraction. So from this the numerator should be subtracted with a number and the denominator also should be subtracted with a number. Now this will be equals to 2 is to 3 that is 2 by 3. Now just simply cross multiply 27 minus x into 3 is equal to 2 into 35 minus x. So that becomes 81 minus 3x is equal to 70 minus 2x. Bring 3x to the right hand side and 70 to the left hand side. 80 minus 70 is equal to minus 2x plus 3x. So it becomes, so this becomes 81 minus 70 is equal to 11 is equal to minus 2x plus 3x. It is x. So x value is equals to 11. So in the options there is no x value. So none of these is our correct answer. See the next question. The average sale of a car dealership was 15 cars per week. After a promotional, the average scheme increased to 21 cars per week. The percentage increase in the sale of cars was so the average sale is 15 cars per week. This is the average. That means the average per week they are selling 15 cars. Initially total number of cars are 15 into 7. So that is equals to 105 cars. Next after the scheme average cars are 21 cars per week. So totally per week they are selling 21 into 7. So that is 147. So the difference between the two conditions is that is after the scheme and before the scheme are 147 minus 105. So that is equals to 42 cars. Now they have asked the percentage increase in the sales first. So total 42 car sales has been increased from the original condition to the scheme condition. So percentage increase in sales is in nothing but equal to 42 by original sales of the car that is 105 into 100. So that is equal to 40%. So option B is our correct answer. See the next question. Two thirds of a consignment was sold at a profit of 6% and the rest at a loss of 3%. If however there was an overall profit of rupees 540, the value of the consignment was. So now let the total value of the consignment be X. Now out of them, Two thirds that means 2 by 3 of the X is sold at a profit of 6% and out of, of the whole part 2 thirds is already sold at 6% profit. So the remaining is 1 third part. So the 1 third is sold at a loss of 3%. So 1 by 3 at a loss of 3%. So this is profit. Okay. So here they have given that the overall profit is rupees 540. We have to find out the value of the consignment. So first let us find the overall the selling price. What is the selling price? Two third is sold at a profit of 6%. Profit means we have to add 6 to the 100. So of 106 by 100. So we can rewrite it as 
six percent no so one or six by hundred into two third of the consignment plus three percent loss so out of hundred three percent loss means uh, subtract three so it will become ninety seven percent of the one third that is ninety seven by hundred into one third of the total cost so that is equals to one time fifty times and here in two table fifty three times this is twenty five so we will get fifty three x by seventy five plus ninety seven x by three hundred so that is equals to seventy five four are three hundred so lcm is three hundred into so now here lcm is three hundred here we are having seventy five so seventy ah uh, three hundred divided by seventy five is four fifty three into four two hundred and twelve x plus ninety seven x so that is nothing but equal to three hundred and nine x by three hundred so this is our total selling price so this value is our total selling price so they have given a profit of five forty rupees so what is the profit it is nothing but selling price minus cost price so our selling price is three hundred and nine x by three hundred our cost price is x so that is equal to take the lcm three not nine x minus three hundred x by three hundred so that is equal to nine x by three hundred so in three table three times hundred times so three x by hundred this is our profit but they have given in the question that profit is equals to five forty rupees so here one time in three table it is one eighty times so x is equal to one eighty into hundred so it becomes eighteen thousand rupees so the total value of the consignment is eighteen thousand rupees so option c is our correct answer see the next question if twenty percent of a is equal to thirty percent of b is equal to one by six of c then a is to b is to c is so here they have given twenty percent of a that means twenty by hundred of a is equal to thirty percent of b that is thirty by hundred of b that is equals to one by six of c so one by six into c so these three are equal now we should find the ratio of a is to b is to c so let this whole equation is equals to k now we will equate the corresponding a b c to k now 20 by 100 a is equals to k that means a is equals to 5k next 30 by 100 b is equal to k so 30 by 100 b is equals to k that means b is equals to 10k by 3 next 1 by 6c is equals to k that is c is equal to 6k now we know the value of a b and c now we will write a is to b is to c is equal to 5k is to 10 by 3k is to 6k so cancel out all the k terms but we are here we are having the denominator part so multiply the three terms with the 3 so 5 into 3 is nothing but 15 is to if we multiply 10 by 3 into 3 3 3 gets cancelled and we will be getting only 10 is to 6 into 3 it is nothing but 18 so the answer is 15 is to 10 is to 18 so option d is our correct answer see the next question the average marks of class of 48 students is 35 of them two scored zero of the rest the first 30 scored an average of 40 the next 14 scored an average of 20 the remaining two scored equal marks what are their individual marks so here the average is given as 35 so first let us write down the average average is nothing but the sum of all the students marks divided by total number of students so total students are 48 is equal to the average is 35 now here given two students scored zero so two students marks are zero 
plus the rest 30 scored an average of 40. So total marks scored by 30 students are 30 into 40 plus 14 scored an average of 20. So total 14 students scored an average of 20. So total marks gained by 14 students are 14 into 20 plus remaining two students scored equal marks. What are their individual marks? So the students who have scored the equal marks, we have to find the marks gained by those students. So let those marks be x. So two students scored x marks. So the total mark scored by two students is 2 into x that is 2x. Now we should find the value of this x. Now this equation becomes 2 into 0, 0 plus 30 into 40, 1200 plus 14 into 20, 280 0, 280 plus 2x is equal to 35 into 48. So that again implies 1200 plus uh, uh, 280 that is 1480 plus 2x is equal to 1680. Now 2x is equal to 1680 minus 1480 that is nothing but equals to 200. Now x is equals to 200 by 2 that is equals to 100. So the students who have gained equal marks is the marks are x. So the equal marks are x that means two students gained both of them have scored 100 of each of them. Okay. So the answer is option D 100. So this completes our model paper. I hope you all understood students. Thank you.